All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is make sure our game is published. In the home tab, there is a game settings button over here. If you click on it and your game is not published, it will ask you to publish, you name it, and then you hit create. So I've already published it, so I'm all set to go. So the first thing we're gonna do is create the actual door. If you've already created a door, then that's great. I'm just going to, I'm, I have my move on 0.25 studs so that it's scaled properly. This is, nobody wants a blocky door. And just to show you guys that this works with many, many, many parts on the door, I am going to put some details to make it look nice. And what's so big about this door, in my opinion, is the fact that when you usually make some type of animated door, it's hard to do it with multiple objects, or a model in this case. It's usually easier to do one part, and that kind of doesn't always look right. It it would it looks a lot better when you are um when you have a lot other parts to add detail to it. So in this case, I'm just going to add this little window trim. I'm going to change this color as well. Honestly, I would recommend getting a dummy spawned in here. So you can see, oof, this door is very tall. See, it's always good to have for proportions because I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. It looks fine, but once you get a reference next to it, you kind of like, whoa, I can't believe I thought that that was scaled properly. All right, then this is too, not what I want. I do metal or a different gray. Okay, I think that looks fine. All right, and then test the width. Okay, I think I think that's fine. It could be a little bit bigger, but I'm fine with that. Oh, uh, you can add a handle, whatever, anything that you want. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna add a handle just what I want. I feel like it adds a nice touch. Ooh. And then I'm going to that on the other side that's nice let me just move it up a little bit okay so now that we got that that is the main door oh i totally forgot to do the window not necessary but kind of finishes it off so let me get some glass going here that looks great all right and then the most important part is creating our hinge we're going to create a part that is going to be welded to the entire door so that we can just rotate that part and it'll look like the door is rotating, which uh, I'll get into it. That probably sounds complicated, but I'll explain as I go. So first we're going to put a part. I'm just going to make a square. Is that a square? I'm kind of dumb. Oh, okay, that's a square. There we go. And then I'm just going to uh, make a neon just so it looks a little better. Change this. It doesn't matter what color it is, it's just to, um, visual effects. So I usually just start off with a square that's about the same size. So do the same width and then scoot it so it's a square and then drag it up like that. All right, so now we are going to do the welding of the door, which is the most important part and is probably why a lot of people struggle with this. So there is this handy dandy little form post that I have here, which was created by this contributor, Colbert2677. Thank you so much for this tutorial. It was very helpful. So I'm basically creating a visual tutorial of this to describe or to explain how this all works with audio and visuals in case you don't feel like reading. So with this, he actually includes code that you can use to weld your door to its root part or its hinge. So what I have done is we're going to Group this way. Actually, make sure that this is named hinge or root or whatever, it doesn't matter. And then we're going to group it up, select it, and then hit Control G. And then we're just going to name this door. And make sure that your primary part is the hinge. So to do that, you can either click here and click on hinge in the explorer or click on primary part and then click in the window, the game window. So then after that, I actually have a 
plugin in the description just to make it easier for you. It's called Weld Model. It's just the same code but created in a plugin. It works exactly the same. But to make sure that it's working, go over to Model and make sure Constraint Details and Show Welds are enabled so you can make sure that it's working. So then make sure your model is selected and then go ahead and click on the button. You should see these lines pop up. If you don't, make sure that you turn these on correctly and then check the output. If you see an error, which as you can see, it's just writing out the code, which yeah, the code is here. Um, if there's any errors, that means that you probably didn't select the door or you don't have the primary part selected. So as you can see, there's all these little green marks and they're basically welding each part of this to this hinge right here. So everything is all set and everything should be set up so it's not anchored and can collide is true. Keep that. Everything should be good. It's set up. Everything is fine now. Now what we should be able to do is create our tween service on our hinge. So we're going to insert a script into service script service and we're going to continue on with our script. All right. So in case you're unaware of how the tween service works, all you need to do is get the tween service first of all by doing local tween service equals game get service tween service. And then we're going to have some variables for our door. So I'm going to have one called local door equals workspace dot door and then local door root equals door dot primary part. This is important because if you do not have your primary part set on your door, then this will not work and your code will error. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to create a variable called door swing info. And this is going to be tween info dot new. And then we're just going to put parentheses. And what this does is it's just setting our tween info to defaults. So there's many ways to do tween services or like creating your tween. But this way we're going to set the default value since we're not writing anything. As you can see, if we, it has all of these things listed here. We have how long it takes, the easing style, easing direction, how many times it repeats, does it reverse in the delay time before it starts, things like that. All of these have default values. So if you have nothing placed in, it will have, it'll just put in its default value. So you don't have to put the values every single time. So we're just going to do new parentheses and now it's set as the default since um, we don't care. Um, I can list the defaults here on the screen right now so you guys know what there are. Um, but yeah, now we're going to continue and we're going to create our tween. So let's do door swing tween. We're going to do tween service create. So now we're creating our tween. We're going to do door root for our object. And then we're going to do panel swing or not panel door swing info as our tween info. And then we're going to create a table. So hit the curly brackets by hitting shift and the bracket button next to P and then hit enter. And it'll do these little brackets and parentheses down here. And we're going to create our code in the middle here. So then we're going to write, oh, this is supposed to be lowercase. My bad. Make sure that all the cap just to make sure that your code is running fine, make sure everything is written the same way I have because capitals matter in scripting. Of course, here for our door, make sure that this name here matches up with the name you have in your door for workspace. So we have door root, door swing, and now we're gonna do C frame equals door root dot, oh, I did it wrong again. Door root dot C frame times C frame dot angles zero math dot rad 180 zero and then parentheses and this is basically the angle which the door swings open so if you've never taken algebra or geometry um you should know that 90 degrees positive depending on where it is i think positive is supposed to go that way or this way you can test it because you can't really know without checking your axis. It's just easier to just test it in game. So 90 will make it face that way. Negative 90 will make it this way. 180 will make it face this way. And 360 will make it go all the way back around to its original location. And that is how circles work. So basically you put that degree here. 
So we should be able to play our tween. So we're going to do a wait so we can make sure that we can actually see it. And then we're going to do door swing tween play. And now we can test. See, after two seconds, it goes like that. And that is the door complete. So the way I've set it up for my game, which I can tell um, positive is going this direction now and negative is that way. So I got it wrong the first time. You just got to play around with it. You should be able to rotate it and it should work the same. So we're just going to change this to negative 90 i actually change it to like 95 so the door is a little bit more than open so it looks a little better but yeah we can go ahead and test this again and it should open the correct way oh i guess it's not negative i guess i got it wrong so it should be yeah there we go all right all right, so I guess that's all that it is for today. Of course, um, this is a more advanced tutorial, and at this point, you should already know a lot about scripting before you're trying to do anything like this. So if you just want to connect this to a touched event or something happening on the client, you're free to do so. That is the point of this tutorial, is to teach the basics of tweening a model, and then you can go ahead and use whatever scripts you want to actually tween it. You just basically have to create this tween somehow and play it somehow on the server. So if you're doing something from the client, make sure you're using a remote event. Other than that, I that's all that I have for you guys today, for today's tutorial. If you liked, make sure that you hit the like button and consider subscribing, it helps out a lot. Alright, thank you guys. I'll see you in the next video.